blah 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 blah. Yeah, it's fine. That's a good yeah. start, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I'll put that in right at the beginning. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. sure when it was it was probably done um at the end of 1988 possibly beginning of 1989 what does it say yeah, it's on got there nine, 1989 on there right 90, well okay then probably 1989 then <laughs> um and that was a, a reaction to me basically drawing uh cartoons and stuff and sticking them on the wall of like when of where I was working so on the wall to, like just behind the computers I'd put like cartoons and stuff up of things I'd drawn yeah um, and I think one afternoon somebody had put a um, you know those sort of um, it was before a whiteboard it was like a big it was like a big whiteboard but it was like sheets of paper yes like A4 A5 pads or whatever they were yeah well somebody had left one of them um, and I had gone past and had started drawing on it because I had like 10 minutes break and then one of the other artists came over and started drawing on it as well and then it turned into a thing like all the programmers and stuff were all stood around us saying draw this, draw that and it was like the whole <laughs> afternoon was just lost because like me and a couple of the guys were just drawing stuff on this piece of paper and well it was a couple of sheets actually um, and then somebody said oh you should do a comic of stuff that's happened and and that was it I was basically uh, I had to do it then because it had been said in front of everybody so everybody thought yeah that's a good idea you do that so yeah all the pressure was on me at that point and <laughs> looking at it um, I had only been in the company for a year because obviously, if, uh -huh. if this is 1989, I'd only been there since March the year before. Oh, wow. So they were wanting me to do this uh, this comic of stuff that had happened. I don't, I don't even know why. I think it was just because there were so many <laughs> stupid things happened in that office that they needed documenting somehow. <laughs> this cover here is just basically because it was called Ocean House, so I just did a very basic house with the ocean house on it and uh if you look at the top there you can see the prices yeah uh can, can you see what that says 6.95 canadian 9.95 us it actually it says six... can us get a pay rise uh <laughs> yes didn't notice that at all <laughs> uh, yeah there's there's it's full of little stuff stuff like that really uh, and down at the bottom as well if you look at the bottom there's a barcode with some boobs yes. in it obviously <laughs> yeah. I'm obviously um, my eyes were drawn there first the last four numbers were actually the code for the security door to get into the office <laughs> and the thing about this was I didn't realise until I was probably on the probably the third issue that Gary was faxing these all over the place to oh, really? like he was faxing it to US Gold and to <laughs> all these other software houses and obviously I was a bit embarrassed because I hadn't put any effort in whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> and to, as you can see there from the ocean logo yeah I didn't put any effort into the art so um, I thought well I, I probably better make it look like I, I know what I'm doing here so that's when I decided to sort of improve the style a bit. I guess when it gets sent out to people outside the office, it becomes like an accidental portfolio. <laughs> it's got yeah, well, some yeah, like US gold and stuff. Of, yeah. 
9.30 a.m., most people have arrived. And another busy day begins. Jeez, it's freezing today. Sounds like Bill coming back from the shop. <laughs> Bill, could you test run the gauntlet? <laughs> uh, well, this was a basic morning in the office. The The building was actually um, a, the uh, Friends Meeting House in Manchester. Like People will probably know that. It was a really old building, and mm. it was run by oh, who are the the Society of Friends, the Quakers. It was their building, but they obviously let us have what we called, and everybody knows, is the dungeon underneath, <laughs> um, which was very stark. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's the uh, we had to sign an in book. Everybody had to sign the name when they came in. And for some reason, Martin. Martin McDonald there with his fag on. He was always first in, like seven thirty in the morning, even though he come from uh, Liverpool to Manchester. Bloody hell! Um, and you can see at the window as well. This yeah. and there was bars in the window, but obviously the um, the razor wire connected to the mains was slightly exaggerated. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But it was it, it was like a dungeon. We did have mm. bars on the windows. Um, we were underneath the pavement level, so we were always looking up at people walking past. And also, it was really cold, so everybody's huddled around. Well, I don't think there is a radiator there, but first thing in the morning, that place was freezing. <laughs> so everybody used to like go into what was Gary Bracey's office and just sit there and try and keep warm until like most of the people had come in. <laughs> So you've got um, you've got Lorraine, who would have been Lorraine Broxton then. She's now Lorraine Starr. You've got Paul Hughes, the programmer, and Martin McDonald, who's he is a uh, Spectrum artist and Amstrad artist. Did quite a lot yeah. of screen uh, loading screens and stuff. Obviously, this is me coming into the comic now. So yeah, everybody would just go out and go to the shop which was around the corner and buy stuff but for some because I was an artist you would basically thought you would just be doing art jobs but no I had to test a game called Run the Gauntlet I don't know if you uh, know of it no, no I don't think so I did wonder what that was I thought it was just a a phrase used in the office but no, I don't I don't recognize the name no there was a there was a TV show a long time ago called Run the Gauntlet Right, um, and it had Martin Shaw in it from the Professionals. Oh, okay, um, and it was it was uh, motorbike racing, uh, was hovercraft racing. There was all sorts of things. It was sort of yeah, right. kind of like an action show. Yeah, um, but uh, apparently I was the only one that could play it. <laughs> so in the in between doing graphics for whatever game I was working on. If ever we got a new build or a new tape of Run the Gauntlet, I had to test it because right. I was one of the people that could could play it better than the testers for some reason. I'm not <laughs> I'm not really that good at games. You're just an expert at Run the Gauntlet somehow. Yeah, I don't know why. It was such an awful <laughs> game. <laughs> uh, yes, Lorraine, whatever you say. You need a shave, Bill. Will this be the last time ever? Why do they call you the animal? Uh, I had to ask. I did. I did wonder. Were you known for biting people? <laughs> I wasn't known for biting people, but for some reason, I was nicknamed animal for the first few years of working there. I don't know. I guess I was a, a bit more boisterous than I am now. I think I've calmed yeah. down quite a lot. <laughs> but. The, the, there was a point when I was working there when I was like, I didn't I didn't go to the gym but I had a gym in my flat and I used to like work ah, right. work out on that a lot and then yeah I started taking this stuff <laughs> which was uh, it, it wasn't steroids but it wasn't far off it was like <laughs> a liquid that you put under your tongue all oh, right okay and apparently it changed my personality so much that 
my graphics manager took me to one side and said, so you're going to have to stop taking this stuff because <laughs> it, it's affecting the way you behave. Because oh, I would wow. get aggressive and like really angry, like straight away immediately. Really? Wow. Um, so I had to stop taking that. And <laughs> you could just buy it from like the, uh, there used to be a bodybuilding shop, like Weida, who used to make all the sort of um, protein shakes and all that. They had a shop. Yeah not far from the office so I tried this stuff and it kind of had an <laughs> adverse effect on me so I had to stop taking it <laughs> but when, you, when your graphics manager tells you to stop taking something you know it must be pretty serious yeah definitely um, so who's who's this guy? right well, that is uh, John Brandwood who was called Elmer right as yes. in Elmer Fudd so we just drew yeah. him as Elmer Fudd <laughs> yeah that makes sense I was thinking this guy looks uncannily like Elmer Fudd yeah, yeah he was, his nickname was Elmer um, and you'll probably see that my t-shirt changes in just yes. about every other frame it changes yes. from white snake to something else I noticed uh, this this t-shirt as well constantly changes in each one yeah but Paul Hughes was known for his uh, t-shirts that had like stupid things on them so uh, yeah that was something that changed as from frame to frame sometimes yeah See you guys later. Oops. Sorry, Bill. Pleasure bumping into you again. Morning, Bill. Why can't you use the door like everyone else? That's Dawn. Uh, Dawn Drake, the artist. So this is really embarrassing looking at these pictures <laughs> of, like... <laughs> especially Dawn. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but she was she was quite happy with it. In fact, she like encouraged me to do like other stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. This is very much uh, showing showing your age and the the time it was drawn. I think. Yeah, yeah. And underneath is Steve Wahid, who was the graphics manager at the time. Right. Who was big into Star Trek? I mean, way yeah. way too much into Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Uncomfortably um, so. So that was that was just like taking the piss out of him a little bit. I think this was yeah. even before the Next Generation original Star Trek. So fan. it was yeah, it was the original <laughs> series, and he was desperate to get one of the little communicators and the phasers and the badges and stuff. He was he was <laughs> well into it. Guess what? Gary's in today. Wow, I wonder what he actually does when he's here. I know. Let's go and peek through the door. Shit. Fuck. Shit, bollocks, twat. I guess he plays games and swears a lot. <laughs> this is, this is, there's a theme running through a lot of these comics. Is, <laughs> is Gary and what is his actual job? <laughs> so, yeah, you can see that we're like sneaking up to see what Gary actually does for a living. And yeah. it turns out is he plays games and swears a lot. <laughs> That's basically what we saw, but we I didn't really un, um didn't really know until later on yeah. how much he actually did as regards to getting licenses, going out and meeting people and setting up relationships with people and yeah. and all that sort of thing. But it was just like what he's a lot of the time he wasn't there. So when he was there, he didn't didn't look like he was doing much. But obviously, <laughs> you know, history will tell you that he was doing loads behind the back, yeah. like, behind everybody's back. Yeah, yeah. And there's 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 people like that in every job as well, where you just think, do they actually do anything? And they're they're doing tons of stuff behind the scenes that you just never you never get around to seeing because obviously you're you're not involved in any of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, this was probably around the time of movie licenses would would have been doing at the time. I think oh, Rambo would have been done. I think Rambo yeah. was being done at the time, as you'll probably see in the next part of the comic. But I think I think Batman had, was just being started, or we had just got some um, sketches from the movie about you know like um, showing you what the the shots and things were going to be like. Mm. So we did get a few bits of pieces and just for reference material. But yeah. you know, he was the one that set up all of that. And that must have been hard work as well, especially I, I don't know. It, it, being in the UK, 
and obviously all of this stuff is happening in Hollywood somewhere. I, I, I can't imagine what kind of transatlantic relationships have to go on there to get that kind of license in dealing. I I don't know. I, I, at the beginning, it was all facts, so mm. we'd just get stuff faxed and and then photocopied around the office, especially if it was like stuff to do with Batman. I think Jurassic Park was a lot better because they actually sent us a press pack and they sent us uh, pre-production photos of the cast and their costumes and oh so much stuff like yeah. sketches of the dinosaurs and all that sort of thing but back yeah. then it was probably just like something sent through a fax <laughs> here's a picture of batman make me a game yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> or, or you would see i think we did get some storyboards of the um the end part where he's flying the uh, bat wing and he's clipping the balloons so that was we got some storyboards of that moving about and yeah just to give us an idea what was going on and basically that was so that we could do like a design um i th- think it would have been probably Mike and Dawn would have been doing this on the Spectrum and Amstrad because I didn't work on the um, the Amiga and ST version until a bit later I don't think It's news field for you Gary Blah 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 bullshit blah waffle waffle blah de blah blah biscuits blah 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 fine and sound blah blah caravan blah 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 Who told you we have the licenses to Little and Large? And Friday the 13th part 19? Your information is wrong. We've actually got the licenses to Terry and June and 2010 too and blah 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 and other things and biscuits and Television and Let's have a look. So this is this is Gary again. Right, this is taking the piss out of his <laughs> out of his licensing, you know. Yes. <laughs> of the because every everything had to be a license at that point. You couldn't yeah. do any um original material because, mm-hmm. you know, they wouldn't take a chance on it. It had to be linked to some sort of license at that point. And I think Ocean is is most known for that as uh, in jokey circles as as you've clearly put here with the the Terry and June license and uh, little and large licenses and stuff. I think it was it was quite well known that Ocean was going to try and grab as many licenses as they could at this point. Hey, you never know. The Terry and June might have worked. I mean, they did they did <laughs> Minder in EastEnders, so that's it's very true. Minder was great, so <laughs> uh, EastEnders not so much, but a Terry and June game could have worked. It could have. You can make a game out of anything. I don't know how little and large would work. And then, to be fair, Friday the 13th, part 19, they they made quite a few Friday the 13th games, (laughs) none of them particularly great, but not far off, really. No, not far off 19 of them, though. No, no, definitely not. I think Halloween's going to beat it at this point. But he taste, he tested all the games as they as they were coming in to play them, you know, for for quality, not for looking for bugs, but just to see how things were going with them. Oh, that Gary was testing them. Yeah, well, yeah. He if he got a, if if we got a building of a game, especially a movie license, he would play it yeah. first, and then it would get sent ah, out right. to everybody else. Is this why he's playing and on the phone at the same time? Yeah, yeah, did that a lot. <laughs> I'm starving again. I think I'll go to the shop. Shop! 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 shop. Will you fetch me a cheesy, crunchy thing? Shop! Shop! Shop. Shop. If he tells me to fetch once more, I'll bite his fucking leg off. I have a Pepsi. Wine gums! Bye, Pepsi. Peace off. Uh, This one, then. I think this is basically just you being everyone's skivvy, is it not? (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know what your situation's like, but if you're in, like, a fairly big family, which is kind yeah. of what it was, if you're all sat around watching the TV and somebody dares to stand get- up, <laughs> yes. it's like, can you get me this? Can you get me that? You know? Yep. And that's basically yeah. what happened here. You couldn't sneak out to the shop because you'd just be inundated with orders. So that's basically what that was about. Yes. And... <laughs> cheesy crunchy thing I've never been mm. able to find it it was it was a weird sort of snack that arrived and disappeared this was around the time of oh, you probably won't remember this there was there was mm. something a chocolate thing called a pyramid it was like a pyramid it was like a pyramid of chocolate with mint inside it 
I'm sure I've just seen a picture of one today, weirdly enough. Somebody else has mentioned it. Well, this, I don't know what it was, but it came in a pack of two fingers like a Twix. Right. And it was... Um, oh, the, the only way I can describe it is if, if they'd made... The outside was if it was made of like cheesy sort of crackers and the inside was soft as if somebody had chewed up the cheesy crackers and spat it into the middle <laughs> it but, sounds delightful <laughs> but everybody was everybody loved these things and i've never been All able right. to find what they were called ah uh, i can guarantee in the, someone in the comments will say, I know what he was talking about within about 10 minutes of this video going out, because people are insane for what they remember, but I can't I can't think what that would be at all. It sounds, it sounds somewhere between delicious and disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, well, it was like a tube of crispy, crunchy, cheesy stuff, and inside it was like soft, cheesy shit, really, so, you know, <sighs> if anybody knows what that is, let us know. <laughs> is this one of those moments where you're annoyed that you wrote it down as cheesy, crunchy thing instead yeah, of the yeah, actual name? Yeah, yeah, because it <laughs> was all any order it was either that or a diet Pepsi or wine gums, as you can see there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Andy Slay, you've been doing that screen for three weeks. When will it be finished? Another couple of weeks should do it. Shouldn't that pixel be yellow? <sighs> Maybe it looks okay the way it is. So who's this? Is somebody new? Is it? Oh no! This is this is another thing I feel bad about as well. <laughs> um, the guy in the middle is called Andy Slay. Yeah, he was a big Commodore graphics guy who used to work. He did this stuff for um, I think he did Rambo, a second Rambo game on the Commodore sixty four. Okay. He was quite slow though. <laughs> <laughs> he was quite slow at screenshots. So like we'd go past every few days and it would look like nothing had been done and we'd be like, is he actually doing anything there? <laughs> um, so yeah, because screenshots were supposed to be done in as quickly as possible we didn't, we weren't able to sort of spend weeks or days doing a, a really nice uh, loading screen, it had to be done immediately, as quickly as possible probably the last thing to do on the game so yeah, and the guy in the right, oh god, he was he was called Rab or Robert. He was from Scotland. Uh, he started after me, but he was he was quite grumpy and quite critical of things. <laughs> oh, I just feel really bad about this as well <laughs> because I spent like two issues taking the piss out of him, and then I decided that, that I had to stop. Yeah. Because he was basically better than me. <laughs> right, right, fair enough. He, he did the graphics for, um, is it B Burning Rubber on the uh, Amstrad console mm -hmm. thing? And I remember seeing that and thinking, you know, fair enough. He's, he was critical mm. of other people's stuff, but, you know, he had he had the, the work to back it up. Yeah, I mean, it's easy, if you're on the receiving end of that, it's, e <laughs> it's easy to take the piss, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, plus it's not it's not good when you've got, like, a tight little crew of people and then somebody comes in mm. and starts, like, saying, like, oh, that's not very good, or you could do that better, or because it just gets everybody's back up. Yeah, and I'm guessing, I'm guessing that was a shared feeling at the time. Maybe, I don't know, but I felt, I felt bad about it later on. Will you help me take some screen pictures? Sure, Alex. Does the shot look okay? <laughs> Can I be in your comic? You already are. And we can't wait to see the back of you. Oh, that's very nice, that is. It sure is. So, this next one, Bill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sexist corner. Sexist corner, here we are. Um, this this is basically me saying to the girls who work there, "Hey, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put you in my comic." <laughs> it's like in the playground where the the uh, my daughter is always coming back and saying, "This boy at school keeps running up and he keeps shoving me, and I hate him." But, but and I have to explain to her that he he's probably doing that because he likes you. It's like the age twenty uh, artist but, equivalent yeah, of that. I yeah, I mean Alex at the top kind of left yeah. early, but. Kate at the bottom, she was like she was a good mate um, and yeah, t oh, she's taking screenshots of Rambo 7 
as you can see there. <laughs> yes. The thing about these screenshots is that's how they were taken. Obviously not with a arse oh, sticking out like that. <laughs> but it was basically a camera on a tripod at a TV screen. That's how they did the screenshots for the magazines. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't until probably two or three years later, after she left and somebody else took over, yeah. that they updated the technology to a cardboard box with a hole in it that you could stick the camera through so that you didn't get any light reflections. <laughs> yeah, I remember on the back of some boxes you would get screenshots that had obviously just been taken on a TV and some would be really obvious, some would be done quite well, but mm. yeah, some would just be obviously someone's just taking a picture of a TV there. Yeah, well that's that's pretty much how we had to do it and yeah. the box, the cardboard box didn't come in until later on. <laughs> And there's my Dead Leopard t-shirt there. So you can see yes. what sort of music I was listening to back then. <laughs> yes, definitely. One of these days, you're... Oh, spoke too soon. Steve, we need you to fix something. Blah, 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 ram. Blah, 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 rom. Blah, 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 virus. Martin was one of these people who would do that. He would click his neck round mm. you know, he just grab his head and twist it and click his neck, it was absolutely horrific <laughs> so I just took it one step further to, to show that his head would actually pop off and Steve Lavash was the hardware guy who put together mm. um, our arcade alley area and uh, he would basically put together bits of hardware if we ever needed it doing mainly oh, right. to do with arcade machines Yeah, but Occasionally we'd get things wrong, so <laughs> that's why obviously he's decided that he's going to do that. Yes, and, and if, then when you actually go down, you'll see he's put his head on backwards. He's put his head on backwards. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It's a very, very <laughs> simple joke. Thanks, Steve. Oops. It's still freezing. I know. I like the old gas fire. You warm enough? What a really heavy bummer. Seems like a really bad trip, man. <laughs> and then the last bit is just the, uh, the... I'm trying to remember what they were called. Yes, I mean, I've only just realised what that is now, the Society of Fiends. I was trying to work that out before the call, but obviously you, you mentioned the Society of Friends. It's, I think it's in the, in the second issue, their, their name, but I can't remember their name at the, at the moment. Fact, why don't I just fucking look it up? I've got it. <laughs> yeah, oh, there we go. They were called Mr and Mrs Slaymaker, uh, and they ran the uh, Quaker house there. Oh god, there's so much to say about that as well. <laughs> the the you you find out if we ever do the second uh, issue of this yeah. is they actually banned us from using the toilets downstairs that were in oh, their wow. part of the building. <laughs> so we basically had one pot for everybody to piss in, and that was including oh that was including the secretaries and people upstairs. Oh no! So that would have been against the law anyway which was like, the, the, the only toilet we were allowed to use after they blocked us was the one that was above ground. We used to be able to use the, the one where we could just go through like where yeah. the dungeon office was. Yeah. Sometimes you go through that door and you would just walk into the middle of an AA meet and you'd have like <laughs> chairs sat in a circle and then they oh would God. all turn and look at you. <laughs> as you as you walked into the toilet, and the last thing you want to do is introduce yourself. <laughs> no, absolutely not. But that was that was the conditions we had, and obviously they didn't want us walking through disturb disturbing their meetings. Yeah. So they locked the door from the inside so that we couldn't <laughs> get in. Obviously, we were paying these people rent. Yeah. Uh, so we couldn't we couldn't use the toilet so we had to use the one toilet that was upstairs past like the main reception you know the nice area of the office that yes, you'd walk yeah. into you know the, the guests walk into yeah and then all those scruffy people would <laughs> go up and use the toilet there basically because oh, they wouldn't let us we had a few offices as well we had one 
which was directly across the road. Yeah. Uh, above a gay bar. Right. Which got quite noisy and <laughs> stuff, especially at night. Yeah. Then we had another office, which was in front of the Discotheque Royale, you know, <laughs> where they used to film the Hitman and Her. So you know, we, we could certainly pick our locations oh, for, definitely. for offices <laughs> when you're trying to work. Oh, wow. So this was before we moved to Castlefield. But, uh, yeah, this is this is in the, the dungeon. And it seems to be, even though we've, we're have probably in Castlefield longer, maybe, yeah. it, it seems to be like the Quaker House seems to be the ocean place. It was like in the early years. But whenever somebody, like when you get people going to like retro events and stuff in Manchester, yeah. they all go to the, the Quaker there, building yeah. and freak out the Quakers. <laughs> Try and use the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>